Eric Darling here with Darling Data. I just noticed something weird under my thumbnail. We don't have to talk about that though. Uh, and in this video, I'd like to talk a little about uh, troubleshooting uh, code that you might find in Query Store or the Plan Cache and uh, the correct way to reproduce it. Now, this works. I'm, I'm using a store procedure. In this case, um, it works equally as well for uh, parameterized queries that you might find from an ORM or another application. Um, it does have some limitations, though, of course. If, um, if you uh, only have like part of the, the query plan or you only uh, have like a, a partial fragment of the code you might be missing, Things like temp tables, uh, local variables, table variables that you would need to execute it. But um, at least in most fairly, you know, uh, straightforward cases, it's pretty easy to do. Uh, I'm just going to use an example uh, that I, I wrote quickly to use uh, Query Store uh, with a store procedure because it just happened to be easier that way. Uh, you know, could I could have used just as easily written parameterized dynamic SQL on the same thing, but you know. Uh, I decided to do something else instead. So, um, what we have here is the output from SP underscore quickie store for a procedure that I wrote called Oh My God Why. Um, note that because this procedure lives in the DBO schema, I did not have to fill in the procedure schema here. If you have different custom schema, you would have to supply that. Uh, so, quickie store knows where to look. So, uh, what you get back from Quickie Store that we're going to focus on are two columns. One of them is the query text, and the other one is the query plan. And we need to get elements from both in order to assemble them uh, in a way that we can test this code. Now, a, a lot of people out there will, will test this by uh, de like, uh, de like declaring local variables and trying to rerun stuff, but... I've done enough variables on lo uh, videos on local variables now that if you're still doing that, um, I, I ought to just come talk to you nicely about why you shouldn't. So the first thing you get is query text. And the way that you get query text is not terribly, terribly helpful to executing it. Right? If you stick this in a new window, it looks a little bit like this. And you can't do much with that. But what you can do is create a temporary store, temporary store procedure, alter procedure, wow. Oh, that's, that's 303, wow. And that should be procedure, not proc. And if you do this and you add in an as, then you have what will basically be a fully functioning store procedure. The problem is if you want to execute this store procedure, you need to get the, 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 the parameter values to execute it with from somewhere. All of that stuff lives in the query plan. So let's get rid of this window because we don't need that anymore. And if we go into the query plan, now I fully admit that um, if you have like one or two parameters, it might be easy enough to gra just go grab the values. Uh, if you get the properties of the select operator, whatever the root operator is way over there, tragic green screen accident hand. Uh, SQL Server has values for all of these things available. But the thing is, I don't want to try and copy and paste stuff out of here because this is a pain in the ass to do. Uh, I, I don't like it. Uh, so that's the that's not where I would get this d this information from if uh, I had a, you know several parameters the way I do here. All right, so I'm just not gonna not gonna do that. Uh, not going to do that at all. What I am going to do is grab the uh, query plan XML. And if we scroll way down to the bottom, we have this blob of information in the XML that uh, we can use to pull parameter values out of. Now, one really tragic downside of the plan XML is that it stores the parameters in the exact opposite order 
that they appear in in the list of parameters for the stored procedure. So answer count is last, creation date is second to last, last activity date third, owner user ID and score. That's the exact opposite of the way they are here. They also have a whole bunch of stuff, XML thingies in them that uh, sort of make for a, a, a tragic set of circumstances uh, when you want to get the, get the values out, like all of the integers, small ints, tiny ints, big ints. Uh, I believe other numeric types are surrounded by parentheses. Uh, I mean, dates are fine. That's just a, a, a string anyway. But you can, you can grab all this information out of there. And then what you can do is uh, we'll get rid of that thing. We don't need that anymore. But uh, I have a sort of fully formed um, version of that here. All right, where you know I'm selecting. Oh, that's off by one, isn't it? There we go. Where I'm selecting from posts, which is well, I'm basically I have all the store procedure set up the way it was set up as an actual store procedure, except now I have a temporary st t store procedure, where it is totally safe to make changes to. And I can test changes to the temporary store procedure without affecting the actual store procedure. Granted, I could always make a copy called like Oh my God Y underscore Eric, but you know. I uh, I don't I don't I don't always want to go go around creating objects. Some people are sensitive to uh, change management, new code entering the database without proper guidance, things like that. But if I uh, run, I'm gonna turn on query plans, and I run, oh my god, why? As a temporary store procedure, I'll get the actual execution plan back with all of the actual execution timings. Uh, it looks like SQL Server is recommending an index to help this store procedure out. Let's see what the details are on this. All right, so SQL Server thinks that we need, uh, well, I mean, all of the key columns. That's That, that at least kind of makes sense because we're searching for those, but then SQL Server also has this somewhat boneheaded idea that we should include every column in the table in our non-clustered index, which, again... If you if you watched my video on SP Blitz Index recently, you'll know my thoughts on the missing index request feature. Um, I would not do this to to a to a table unless I absolutely had to. It's cruel and astoundingly unusual to create an index this big. There's uh, a couple few uh, big big strings in there, including body, which is an Invarkar max, and we just don't want to do that. So uh, the temporary store procedure thing I know feels like an anti-pattern when we have an actual store procedure, but like I said, some people are sensitive to adding new code into a database without you know, it going through change management and other stuff like that. Other times you might just find like a piece of dynamic SQL or you might find application code and uh, you know you could grant it again, you could like rewrite it as dynamic SQL, like parameterize dynamic SQL to do this. I just find this to be a little bit easier to do. Um, I, granted, there's there's some assembly required no matter which way you do it, but I just find this to be an easier way to do stuff and make changes. Because if you rewrite this as dynamic SQL, you're probably also going to have to deal with like changing single ticks to double ticks, and you're going to have to like you know deal with like maybe debugging stupid like you're missing a parenthesis or comma errors in dynamic SQL, which just don't show up. My, the, not, like IntelliSense and like SQL prompt and other tools like that just don't don't check dynamic SQL for syntax errors and it's just a lot easier to kind of deal with it this way. So as much as I love dynamic SQL, I do love temporary store procedures in this case a lot better. It's just a, a lot a lot less uh, a lot less fiddling and tinkering and looking like looking like a fool while you're trying to tune queries in front of a, a live audience. So anyway, uh, that's what I do. Uh, maybe it would be useful for you to do it that way too. I don't know. I don't know your life. You, you might, you might hate this whole thing. Anyway, uh, I hope you enjoyed yourselves. I hope you learned something. Uh, I hope that you will find it in your hearts to like and subscribe, to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Uh, and uh, thank you for watching. Um, I, I, my, I don't know if I'm, I'm done for today, but I certainly, I certainly feel done for today. So um, who knows what will happen, though. All right. Thank you for watching.